will be given by Ichiro Hasuo on lattice theoretic progress measures and algebraic model checking. Thanks, Alexandra. Okay, uh, let me slowly start. So this is the joint work with uh, Shinsuke Shimizu, who is there, who is my uh, master student, and then our collaborator, Corino Thurstel from University of Southampton. Okay, and, uh, uh, in this work, the main contributions are these two. But uh, let me start out with something uh, simple, something you are uh, very familiar with, namely invariance and ranking functions. Okay, so this is the, uh, the, probably the most basic setup for model checking. And then you can think of LTL specifications like everywhere P, which is the greatest fixed point, or eventually P, which is the least fixed point. And then for establishing those uh, temporal properties, fixed point properties, so for the greatest fixed point properties, you would use something called invariance. Like, uh, I just put the rule here, but it, so it just says that I, this I is an inductive invariant that indeed witnesses what we want. Whereas for least fixed point properties, something like eventually P or even termination, in the context of program analysis, uh, you would use uh, ranking functions, something like this, the omega valued uh, function that decreases. Okay, the question now is, so these two uh, proof techniques, although the goals greatest and least fixed points, they are dual to each other, they, they come in quite different flavors. And uh, the question, Sorry. The, the question is, how comes this difference? How come uh, they look so different from each other? And uh, it's nice to take, at this moment, a foundational view. So these two are the very well known. Are they, I don't know. Are they practicing applause or what? Uh, so, <laughs> OK, so, uh, so let's look at this lattice theoretic foundation. So let's assume that L is a complete lattice, and F is a monotone function. And then the, there are the, these two uh, well-known theorems. One is Nastatowski, in which the least fixed point is the least, the least, oh yeah, oh yeah, the least fixed, prefixed point, while the greatest fixed point is the greatest post-fixed point. But the, it's nice that these two characterizations give rise to those proof rules. So like, if you find a prefixed point, then you are sure that that's, that's above the least fixed point, and the same here for the greatest fixed point. Okay, and the other uh, characterization, uh, the, uh, what we call, what, what I would call the Kuzo, Kuzo one, uh, it's an inductive construction. So for the least fixed point, you would start with the, 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 the bottom of this complete lattice, and then you uh, keep applying this function f, uh, possibly transfinitely. And then the theorem has it that it eventually stabilizes, and then it converges to mu of f. And the same for the uh, greatest fixed point, but you start with the top element, okay? But then these, again, give rise to proof principles. Like, so here, every approximant in this sequence is below the, the limit mu of f, whereas here you uh, start from the top and then you go down. Therefore, uh, you, your approximant is always uh, above mu of f, okay? And uh, so we've, uh, this results in four principles, but then for the purpose of verification, actually, there are only two uh, which are relevant to us because in verification, after all, we are looking for uh, under approximation. Uh, sound approximation from below. Okay, so for, uh, upper or lower, it depends on the definition of order, but anyway, so these two are the only relevant ones. Okay, so we have seen that safety properties are witnessed by invariance, and to establish liveness properties, least fixed points, you would use ranking functions. This is all normal. And then the question is, uh, what about nested, the combination of these two? nested alternating greatest and least fixed points. And uh, you probably know already the answer, that is, so uh, the 
common answer is winning strategies for a parity game. Let me elaborate on this. So, uh, like, in many um, verification techniques, algorithm, it's surprising that many of, so many of them take this parity game workflow. So you have a, your problem, model checking, satisfiability, synthesis, whatever. So you encode your problem into parity game. And then there is this seminar algorithm by Judinsky that efficiently solves it. And uh, you get the winner and his or her winning strategy for this parity game, which you can translate back to the solution of your original problem. And uh, this parity game uh, turns out to be a very powerful formalism for two reasons. One, because, because they are games, they have alternating branching, and you can use exploit that to encoding the alternation between conjunction, disjunction, universal, and existential, and so on. That's one thing. And the other thing is, of course, the parity acceptance condition, which you can use for uh, alternation between mu and news. OK, so uh, let's look at parity games and Judinsky's notion of progress measure, which is the core ingredient of this algorithm. So here is a parity game, and the diamond states, they are your positions, and the box states, they are the opponent's positions. And then, so your goal is, the, of course, the parity acceptance condition. And uh, it's, it, let me step, spell it out. It's uh, the greatest uh, priority that you visit infinitely often is even. Right, which I just succinctly put, visit big or even. And then my question is, who is winning in this parity game? And then, so Judinsky's uh, algorithm solves it, but anyway, so in this game, you are winning. Because uh, by taking this uh, strategy, you can force the current state to be either in this loop or in this loop, and in any case, you win because in each of these loops, the greatest priority that you see is two, an even number. But this uh, informal argument, how can we put it in mathematical rigorous terms? That's where this Judinsky's notion of progress measure comes in. So it's actually, it's like, like, in, like with ranking functions, it is an assignment of such numbers to each state of this game. And uh, what they mean, so the top one is the counter for priority three. It tells you how many threes you have to visit in the future. And the bottom one is the counter for the priority one. It tells you how many ones should be visited, but then we all under the condition that uh, visiting two, that is a, a bigger priority, even priority than one, cancels out visiting one, okay? And then uh, possibility of such uh, assignment proves that you are actually winning in this game. Under some conditions, for example here, because this guy has got uh, priority three, the three counter is incremented. And here, because of this priority one, the one counter, n sub one, is incremented. And then here, uh, because this is two, which is doing good for us, uh, it allows you to cancel out the uh, cancel out or like reset the one counter from one to zero. Okay. And uh, okay, so this is the intuition about Judinsky's algorithmic notion of progress measure. And here comes the uh, precise definition. And uh, uh, this is something that is playing the important role a prioritized ordinal. So we are assuming for simplicity that uh, priorities are from zero to six, then a priority, prioritized ordinal is for, uh, it's a counter, bunch of counters for one, three, five, because these are the odd numbers here. And then what is even more important is the notion of orders, order between them. And it's so-called the i-th truncated uh, lexicographic order. So this is like, it compares these two truncated uh, prioritized ordinals, but from the viewpoint of priority i. And then we say it holds if the lexicographic order holds, but we ignore, here we ignore 
uh, all the counters for priorities less than the current one that we are interested in. For example, so if, uh, you are inter if we are interested in priority one, then you just use the usual lexicographic order, whereas if we are interested in uh, priority as large as four, you can truncate most of the counters. Okay, then a progress measure, you can, uh, it can be uh, precisely defined as a, an assignment of such ordinals uh, subject to those uh, like going down conditions. Okay, so this has been about this progress measure for a parity game. And our goal, our first contribution is the generalization or lattice theoretic characterization of this algorithmic notion to uh, uh, this, uh, what we call lattice theoretic progress measure. This is our first main contribution. And, uh, so, and then uh, in defining this guy, uh, we rely on the two uh, characterization of fixed points that are behind these common proof methodologies. Okay, so before doing so, let us in introduce a syntax for fixed points. And uh, uh, this is our syntax, which is uh, taken from this work, equational systems. We use equational systems. So like, it's a bunch of equations. On the left-hand side, you have variables, they are naked. And on the right-hand side, you, have, you see monotone functions. And each equation is annotated with mu or nu, uh, of course, because uh, that they tell us uh, whether we are interested in least or greatest fixed points. And, uh, okay, so it should be straightforward to work out. It, it is straightforward to work out the correspondence between this presentation and the usual textual mu calculus like. Uh, presentation. But what is important here is that the order of these equation matters because as you solve this inner equation first in the mu calculus, we solve the uh, top equation first. But anyway, okay, so then here comes our definition of progress measure for such an equational system. We restrict to this form for presentation. Okay, so a progress measure, it's a uh, witness, like an invariant or ranking function. It's given uh, by such data. It's a bunch of uh, approximants, which are elements of this complete lattice, and these approximants are indexed by these ordinals, counters. So, uh, so we have four uh, components, and these are e for each variable, and uh, these counters are for each of these mu variables. And then this data is subject to these three conditions. The first one is monotonicity. It, it just means that if, if the counter is bigger, then you must go up. But this bigger in the sense of this truncated uh, lexicographic order. And the second condition is mu variable, or a condition of mu, mu variables. And then, so this we derive from this kuzo kuzo characterization. So uh, as in here, we have to think of the base case. We start from the bottom if the counter is zero, and then step case that uh, essentially takes, uh, applies F once, and then we also take the limit case for limit ordinals. And then finally for mu variables, sorry, for, for new variables, we have this condition, which essentially uh, derives from this nasta tarski uh, characterization. By the way, it's important that, okay, so the, the, uh, an important role here is played by these ordinals and truncated lexicographic order. And you see that, like, uh, for example, here, when we are dealing with priority two, whatever for priority one is not important. Therefore, you can arbitrarily change, modify the counter for priority one because it's less important. You don't care. Okay, so this has been the definition. So it's uh, progress measure is such data subject to these conditions in which uh, we see this, we saw these conditions derived from Kuzo-Kuzo theorem and Nasta-Tarski theorem. 
And this truncated notion of lexicographic order plays an important role. Look, and this is our correctness result. We have soundness. This progress measure witnesses or under approximates the solution of such equational system. That means that each approximant is below the solution. And then there's also a completeness result and that says that there's a progress measure that achieves equality here. Okay? And then we complete this table. And uh, so what we expect is a, a bunch of, like a lot of potential applications of this lattice theoretic uh, notion of progress measure, which is a generalization of this algorithmic notion. For example, in theorem proving or proof assistance, you could uh, use it as a proof rule. And uh, another thing is, like, uh, there are, in the context of program verification, of course, there are a lot of work on symbolic synthesis of invariants or symbolic synthesis of ranking functions, let's say, for termination. But then, you know, given this notion, we can naturally think of symbolic synthesis of progress measures for nested or alternating fixed point uh, specifications. And uh, we, we also expect this, but okay, so the last application is generic co-algebraic model checking for which uh, I'm gonna spend the last minutes of this talk on. So this is our second main contribution. So co-algebra, maybe you know it because uh, Alexandra, I heard that she gave a wonderful uh, introduction talk in the mentoring workshop, but it's a uh, categorical abstraction of state-based dynamics. Like, like X is the state space and C is the dynamics, and this functor F can be taken variously, and then uh, different F uh, models, different class of dynamics, like finite automata, LTS, you can also think of uh, probabilistic systems and so on. Okay, and then co-algebraic modal logic is essentially the co-algebraic generalization of modal logic. Then here, like, modalities are introduced in a uniform way by so-called uh, predicate liftings. And then this covers a uh, rather surprising uh, variety of examples, like usual Hennessy minimal logic, like usual modal lo logic, of course, or like graded modal, graded modal logic, where you can talk about in at least K many successors, blah, 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 and so on. And then we can equip uh, this logic with fixed points in the form of equational systems that I have talked about. Then the first class, our, the first class of our contribution is uh, these ones. So we adapt the notion of lattice theoretic progress measure for this model checking program, problem. And then this is the notion of a progress measure. And then it witnesses the truth value of such an, this is a fixed point formula interpreted in this core algebra. And this works for an arbitrary setting. So X can be infinite, this truth value can be continuous and so on. But then uh, if we restrict this work to this result to a finitary setting, then we actually get a model checking algorithm. And it's a, uh, it's a generic one that works for, let's say, graded logic, for Hennessy Muna logic, for neighborhood logic in a uniform way. And uh, uh, we, have, we also have a complexity result that is exponential only in alternation depth, which is typical complexity in many um, model checking algorithms. Okay, and then the second class of contributions, it, it, this slide is actually for, mostly for co-algebra specialists, sorry, but uh, so by linear time, I mean linear time, LTL as opposed to CTL. And uh, it turns out that linear time behaviors are more challenging to model for co-algebraic uh, uh, techniques. And then we take this well-established uh, approach of moving to a classic category. And in this work, we focus on non-deterministic branching. But we, the probabilistic branching should be easy, and we are working on that. And anyway, so again, we have the notion of progress measure that witnesses the truth value of such a fixed point formula in a system with additional non-deterministic branching. 
But then now it's a, you know, the progress measure is given by a data like this as before, but together with the one tree, it's a F coalgebra. And then to get the, this decidability result, so in a finitary setting, uh, the, tru the truth value is actually decidable. But uh, to get the decision procedure, we, should, we had to uh, establish this small round tree theorem that, this, that, that bounds the size of possible witness. Okay, so I think more or less it. So that, that this is the conclusion. So this is what we did. So uh, for safety, invariance, for liveness, ranking functions, this is all as usual. But for nested alternating fixed points, uh, we uh, generalized this uh, winning strategies or progress measures, the, the algorithmic notion by Judinsky to the lattice theoretic notion. And here are the potential applications of this general notion, and also it translates to a large part of our future work. Thanks a lot. I wonder if you have considered um, applications of your lattice theoretic progress measure. Um, so here, here is one possible application. Uh, so there are people who have considered uh, parity games with an infinite number of colors or priorities. I am. Um, so your lattice theoretic measure might be um, a good notion to, to test out on this setting. Have you considered that? Uh, the quick answer is no, but then, uh, so the, that direction of generalization is also gone out to our current one, but still, like, indeed, like, if I, I, I need, I, had, I, I have thought about uh, having infinitely many equations, and then that translates to infinitely many, infinitely many colors in parity games, and then I suppose it's possible, yeah. I'm surprised that that corresponds to infinite number of equations. Yeah, because like uh, it's like like you have a bunch of equations, and then it's basically for priority one, priority two, priority three. So like I, I thought it corresponds to an infinite lattice. Infinite what? Sorry. Uh, lattice with infinitely many elements. Yeah, and well, actually our work, our current work. Uh, covers that, so like the, the uh, complete lattice L that we have been talking about, it can be infinite. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. So uh, I missed the uh, first uh, part of the talk, so maybe this is why I'm confused. Uh, when I okay. see safety and liveness, I tend to think the fixed point uh, the other way around, <laughs> least and greatest. Yeah. Why? Uh, I don't know why you'd expect so, but... <laughs> uh, for safety, you want to compute the, uh, the least fixed point of the, uh, the transition system, and you want to see that uh, content in the, uh, the safe set. Whereas for the liveness, you want to compute the greatest fixed point of the system, and you want to know that that gives you the, uh, the possible infinite traces the, uh, the system has, and you want to check that there's containing the property. Yeah, well, actually, uh, when I practiced my talk, indeed, my uh, program, program verification colleague gave the same comment. And uh, well, the thing is that uh, uh, he has uh, like, some like, kind of logical duality involved. And uh, like, depending on from which side you are looking, the order is reversed. But then I can assure you that what, is, what I'm showing here, what I'm showing you here, is something very standard. So you can, like, I mean, those invariants, I mean, like, least and great fixed points, you can just take the opposite. It doesn't harm.
Yeah, indeed. Yeah, so, so it says forthcoming and we have actually written down something. I can show it to you, but so the, 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 our idea here is to depart from the usual, uh, like, I mean, the usual co algebraic notion of co induction. So we are here, we are not anymore talking about the unique homomorphism to a final co algebra, but the greatest and least ones. So like we have to rely on these like fixed point equations for co algebra homomorphism, and that's the idea. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.